Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to be taking a look at a home theatre projector from Vankyo. This is the Leisure 410. 720p, 5,500 lumens, $99. I think it's a winner. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today's video we're going to be taking a look at this projector from Vankyo. This is the L410 or Leisure 410. Now at the moment in the UK this is £109, around about $99 in the US. Prices do fluctuate a little bit, obviously time of year etc. But looking around about the £100 mark, give or take, for a home projector, which I think is pretty decent. Now this has got a native resolution of 720p, but will accept sources higher than that, so 1080p etc. And obviously you can put a lower source in there, so DVD quality, 480p, that kind of thing isn't going to be an issue, so if you want to use this with an older device, maybe Nintendo Wii or an old console, whatever it may be, this is going to be absolutely fine. Also, it comes with a load of accessories, which we'll be taking a look at in a minute, but I think this is actually a real winner. The price point is pretty much spot on for those wanting to dip their toes into the world of home theatre, but without actually spending an absolute ton of money. So, is a home projector for you? Well, let's find out. So, first of all, let's look at the packaging. The packaging is pretty simple. There's no uh, expenses spared on this whatsoever. Basically, recyclable packaging, you can throw this in the bin pretty much as soon as you're done. Although, you may want to keep hold of it because this does actually come with a three-year warranty, which, again, for a £100 mark, to get a three-year warranty is pretty extraordinary. So, like I said, the packaging is pretty plain. It's, uh, there's not a lot going on there. It doesn't really tell you anything. So, let's take it out of the box and see what we actually get. So, first thing you notice is it comes in its own carry case. How cool is that? And it's a really nice padded carry case and uh, yeah, it looks pretty decent. So you've got zippers on the top so you can unzip that and actually get into the goodies on the inside. So inside you've got everything packed in there nice and neatly, including all of the accessories that are included. Also you've got a little bit of room up here so you can put other things in there, some cables, headphones if you want to, that sort of thing. But let's go through and see what we actually get. So there is a happy or unhappy thing, so you can contact and support details. So if you want to get in touch with Vanco, all the details are there. We get a Leisure 410 Quick Start Guide, which just opens out, so that is a really basic Quick Start Guide. You also get a slightly more detailed user manual, and on the back again, all the support details with your QR code, so if you do get any issues, then you can contact them very, very easily. But everything in here is really simply laid out. It's pretty much idiot-proof. What do we get next? So there is a remote control, so let's take a quick look at the remote control. So the remote control is pretty much the same size as you'd expect to find with like a Fire TV stick, that kind of thing. Very slim, very portable, you could quite easily slip it in your pocket or just put it back in the carry case when you're not using it. To get the battery case open, this one uh, fooled me a little bit to begin with, I thought it was going to be a slide off job, but it's not, there's a little latch on the side and all you do is put your thumb in there and you can gain access to the batteries. Batteries aren't included, you will need to supply your own, but it's just a couple of AA batteries, so uh, most people have got those somewhere at home. So remote control, actually pretty fully featured. Fast forward, rewind, play, pause, power off, mute, all those kinds of things, and the various source buttons. So yeah, everything you need there. Next up, we have power cable. So it's a figure eight type lead. And obviously, depending on where you buy it, you'll get the plug for your local area. Also, there is a foot adjuster. So that screws onto the bottom. So you can use it to raise and lower the adjustment for the unit. So if you're on a slight angle, you can use that to raise it up a bit, as you've probably seen from some of the B-roll shots that we've shot. You get a AV cable. Now this is going to be great if you've got those older devices like Nintendo Wii's, that sort of thing. Maybe an old PlayStation. You can hook that up, plug that into the side, and you're off to the races. Literally. Next up, we've got a really nice, long, flat HDMI cable. So if you're pl maybe planning on installing this somewhere on a semi-permanent basis, these nice flat cables are really good, so you can tuck them down the back of a shelf or cabinet, whatever it may be. But nice to see a, a good quality cable included straight out of the packet. Now this next one is a, a really cool little feature. I was surprised that this was included as part of the kit, but it is. This is a portable tripod. So you've got three leg tripod, so nice and sturdy. Each one of the legs has got a rubber grip on the bottom, so wherever you put it, it's gonna grip quite nicely. So you should be able to uh, put that pretty much wherever you want. And any sort of little knocks and nudges, it should absorb those quite easily. There's an adjustable on the top, so you can get it nice and tight onto the device. And there's a locking mechanism as well. So, so to release the mechanism, all you need to do is with your thumb or your fingers, just push the lever down and that will release the ball head and then you can move that around in whatever direction you want to to get the right picture or the right angle for your picture. And then when you're done, just release it 
and push it firmly into place and then that is locked into position. Pretty decent. You can still move it a little bit because that is the normal thing with these kind of ball devices, but really you're gonna have to hit it or move it pretty vigorously to make it shift. So yeah, pretty nice inclusion. Again, as it's included with the kit, you can't go wrong. Last but not least, we've got the projector itself. So let's take a look at this. Again, it's all supplied in this really nice carry case. So the idea is it's a leisure unit. So it's portable, you can take it around with you, maybe take it around to your friends, family, uh, maybe have a games night or some kind of movie night. Really easy to do, really portable and uh, pretty sexy looking as well, if you don't mind me saying. So this is the unit itself. On the front, we've got a cap, which is a silicon cap, which covers up the lens. Now, I actually prefer this than the plastic ones. The plastic ones generally tend to get a little bit loose over time and just fall off, whereas this one does grip in there quite nicely. So looking at the projector itself, let's go around and have a tour. So we've got our lens on the front. Now, there isn't a zoom lens on this, so you will have to put it where you want it to be to get the right picture. So that is one of those unfortunate trade-offs at this kind of price point, so there isn't any zoom on it. But you do have a focus wheel, which is built in on the top, so nice and easy to get to, and you've got a pr pretty decent adjustment on there. You've also got your full control panel on the top, so again, pretty much replicating what is on the remote control, so up, down, left, right, okay. On, off button, source button, menu button, all those kinds of things. Nice and easy to do, nice and easy to actually gain access to should you need to. So going back to the front, we've got the Vanco logo. We've also got our first of our IR sensors. So there's one on the front and there's also one on the back. So depending where you set this up, maybe you've got it set up in front of you, ceiling mounted, and you want to aim towards the back, or maybe you've got it behind you and you want to aim towards there. Okay, whatever you want to do, you don't have to have that sort of issue of hunting around with the remote control, trying to get it to actually read the signals. On this side, we've got some connectivity. So we've got our power plug. There's also a fan output there, so for cooling. An unusual thing to see actually on a projector is a coax lead. So if you've got free to air channels available in your country, then you can pick up those. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a digital tuner built in, which is a little bit of a downside for those of us in the UK. But if you're in other countries where there's still free to air terrestrial channels, then you can pick those up and you can store them in the unit, do a channel scan, it'll pick up whatever's available. If, for instance, you're working in maybe a church or some kind of meeting place where you're actually beaming RF signals, this is going to be great because you're going to pick up those RF signals very easily because they're not on the DVB spectrum and you can use that in your projector. So really good for those kinds of things. Next up, slightly more old school, we've got our VGA connections. So if you've got maybe an old laptop or something that you want to beam your movies from, you can use that, no problem. There's also a USB port. Now that can be dual function, so you can use that to power a device such as a Fire TV stick or you can use it to plug in a standard thumb drive, which you can play movies back from. So AVIs, MP MP4s, all those kinds of things. You can load up a memory stick and just put it all on there. Also, you can do things like text documents, images, all that kind of thing, which I'll show you a little bit later in the menus. Next up, we've got our SD card. So that'll take SD cards or micro SD cards in a suitable adapter. And again, the same thing, you can load all those things up. The USB port, actually, another thing it does do is screen mirroring. So with an appropriate cable, which unfortunately I don't have at the moment, I'm waiting for one to come through from Amazon, you can actually connect up your Android phone or your iOS phone, and you can do screen mirroring, which again, for movie nights or for watching YouTube videos on a larger screen, absolutely brilliant. And also, possibly you can charge your phone at the same time. On the back of the unit, we've got more ventilation and a speaker grill. There's also a keystone correction button on the bottom, so you can slide that across to adjust your keystone. There's not a massive amount of adjustment on there, so again, you are gonna be slightly careful of where you mount the unit to get that screen absolutely perfectly level, but there is some adjustment there. You've got a single HDMI port, so you, again, for things like your Fire TV sticks, games consoles, PC, whatever it may be, if it's beaming out an HDMI signal, then you can plug that into there. We've got our next IR blaster receiver, so again, depending where your remote control is, pick up front or rear. We've also got our AV jack, so with our AV cable, you can just plug that into the back and then plug in your things like Nintendo Wii, older Playstations, uh, Mega Drives, Genesis, whatever it may be. Any devices which use those kind of connections. Next up is a earphone socket, so if you're using this maybe in a bedroom and you don't want to disturb people but you still want to watch your movies on a big screen, you can plug in a set of headphones there. Moving around to the bottom of the device, again, more ventilation and a speaker grill. There's also two screw holes. So that screw hole there is for the small included leg, which will raise it up slightly. And that screw there is a quarter inch thread, which we're gonna be using for the tripod, or if you wanted to buy a separate tripod, you can always use it for that. Again, it's entirely down to you. 
Also, you've got four rubberized feet to stop the device moving around or to prevent any vibrations from the fans, etc., coming through to the surface that it's mounted on. But overall, I think it's actually a, a pretty smart little device. It is pretty compact, and I'd say it's probably about 10 inches wide by about six inches by about three and a half, four inches tall. So pretty compact, but there's only one way to actually find out if it's any good, and that is to fire it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and we'll be right back. Okay, so there we go, there is the unit set up, and uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I've got it set up correctly and you can actually see that it's in focus. It's actually really difficult to focus on a projector whilst it's actually uh, in a dark setting. Cameras generally don't like focusing on that sort of thing. So this is the, uh, the main menu. And you've got the choice, you've got movie mode. So if you've got movies on a USB stick, you can stick a USB or an SD card in, like I said. Uh, you can play back music, you can browse photos text documents, and there's a section there for support. So you click on there, it gives you the support details for North America, United Kingdom, Germany, France, French, Italy, Espana, and uh, I'm assuming that's Japanese at the bottom. But anyway, I'm digressing. So let's go back to the main menu and we'll go into our sources. So if we go into sources, we go into HDMI, you can choose ATV, which is your um, television, so antenna TV. Again, if you've got terrestrial, you can do that. VGA, HDMI, USB, etc., AV. So we're going to HDMI, and this is the Amazon Fire TV stick. And as you see, the one good thing about this is taking a 1080p signal, it's 60 hertz, but it's downscaling it to 720p. And actually, considering the wall that we're using, I'll show you a quick cutaway of what the wall actually looks like. It's basically just a very, very roughly plastered wall with wallpaper and white paint on it, or slightly off white paint. And considering it's that, it does actually look pretty decent. You see some of those colors are coming through really vividly. Hopefully they're coming through clear on the uh, the camera as they are to my naked eye, but it does look absolutely fantastic. I'm really surprised. The clarity of the image, the sharpness, the contrast, the contrast ratio from what I've been told is about 3000 to one. So it's not massively high, but it certainly does give you a pretty decent contrast. Again, we're looking at 5,500 lumens, and 720p, like I said. This is an upgraded version. There is another version of this projector, which is just the standard Leisure 410. The older version, which was actually a 480p. So they've upgraded the lumens to 550 from 450 and also increased the native resolution up to 720p from 480. And the images, as you can see, are pretty stunning. I'm, uh, I'm genuinely impressed. It's quite a, a bright day here in the United Kingdom. Uh, we've had some pretty decent weather, so it's very bright. And literally all we've done is just close the curtains. There is some other ambient light, which you've probably seen from some of the B-roll. So I've got my monitor in the background on a white screen. The mic's unboxing reviews and how to sign is lit up, etc. So there is other light. Now this lighting at the moment, I would say would be pretty much as you'd have in a living room. Everything in here is visible. We're not in pitch blackness. It's, uh, it's a very reasonably well lit room, but yet the picture still looks incredible. I'm looking at the picture on the camera recording screen it does look absolutely phenomenal. So let's try a movie because pictures are one thing, but moving pictures are another. So this is uh, Jurassic Park, an old classic. So let's have a look at this one. Have a look at the trailer. Okay, so you get a general idea with that one. And I've got to show this one because it's probably one of the most popular films of last year and possibly one of the highest selling films of all time, so.
I can't get over how good the picture quality is considering the low price of this thing and even though the audio isn't exactly earth shattering the end of the Avengers that theme tune still uh, sends shivers down your spine and makes the hairs on your arms stick up so if it does that it's pretty decent in my opinion so anyway let's take a look at some of the menu features so in the menu you've got things like picture I've left this pretty much exactly as it came out of the box so picture mode is in standard color temperature is set to medium aspect 16 by 9 you can change that to 4 by 3 auto etc noise reduction is on middle and projection mode is in front you can change that so it's front rear side whatever the case may be uh, sound you've got standard mode you've got balance auto volume all those kinds of things you've got a sleep timer settings for your on-screen display to reset defaults blue screen software update so is there if an update does become available then you can update it via USB yeah so a pretty standard menu not really a great deal going on there um, normally if you're in TV mode the box on the far left hand side gives you options for scanning for channels all that kind of stuff so yeah not really much more to report on there but overall I think it's actually a pretty decent proposition again for the money, I don't think you can go too far wrong. £100 for a projector these days isn't a massive amount of money. They can cost thousands and thousands of pounds. And when they look this good, then, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think you're off to a winner with this one. Let's see one with a slightly more colour in it. Okay, anyway, you get the idea. I don't want a copyright strike, but I think it looks great. The sound is pretty awesome, actually. Now I'm getting used to it. The actual noise from the projector itself, the fan noise, there is a little bit of noise. It's not silent by any means, and I'll, I'll quickly uh, walk around to the other side of the box so you can hear it from the other side. There is a little bit of a noise coming out there, but it's not really an offensive noise. It actually doesn't sound too bad, and certainly when there's a film running or you're watching something, it kind of drowns out into the background. But yeah, overall, pretty impressed okay so we're back now and I've got a Windows desktop on so you can see the desktop and actually I thought I'd measure as well the distance between the projector and the wall so with my arms stretched out I am pretty much touching the wall so that is probably going to be about six and six maybe seven foot away from the wall and that is currently projecting a screen which is about six and a half seven foot diagonal so yeah pretty good it can do up to 180 inches they tell me so it'd be interesting to see that but anyway this is the uh the page here you can see so vanco l410 native 720p projector and hopefully you guys can actually read what is on the screen just as clearly as i can it actually is quite sharp i wouldn't say it's suitable for uh office work perhaps because some of the smaller text is a little bit difficult to make out but it's uh certainly is usable i wouldn't want to do it 24 7 but again it's uh it's very very usable so let's try some games so that is one thing that always get asked so let's try a little bit of rocket league so 
So I'll turn that down a little bit so I can give you a little bit of a commentary. Now actually it's a... Uh, oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work out well. So there's definitely no obvious motion blur that I can tell, and there doesn't seem to be any obvious input latency either, so the controls are matching up. My gameplay obviously doesn't reflect that, because I'm pretty rubbish, but the colours look very, very vibrant, and it's a very, very accurate um, representation of what was on the screen. Oh, not again. Getting a little bit distracted now, but... Yeah, hopefully, again, you can see what I can see. And again, there doesn't seem to be any obvious lag. Oh, I suck. Okay, that's enough of that, but I'll check out the options so you can just see that we were actually in are you, 1080p, 69 full screen. I've got the frames per second capped at 75 frames per second because of my monitor that this is normally plugged into. But this is still going pretty well. I am awful. <laughs> Not again. Okay. I'm definitely going to rage quit now. So exit game. And then we go we're back to our Windows desktop, which actually looks great. So there we go. That is the, the Vankyo. So some of the features of it. Native 720p, 5,500 lumens, uh, wonderful viewing experience, superior sound. Well, that is slightly debatable, but... Ultra long life lamp, I didn't mention that, up to 5,000 hours on the lamp, which is pretty decent. Advanced aero cooling noise, 80% quieter than the previous model. And wide compatibility, like I said before. Screen mirroring, I haven't been able to do on this review, I do apologise. Uh, maybe we'll do a uh, catch up video on that at a later point. But it's compatible with smartphone, TV sticks, PS4, HDMI, VGA, TF, AV, USB, Xbox, etc. And you can see the price there at the moment is $109.99 with free delivery if you're on Amazon Prime. And it's in stock, which is a rarity these days. So if you want one, you can get one pretty much next day. You see, if you're on Prime, get it tomorrow. So if you like this and you want to get one, click on the link, which we'll put in the video description, and you can pick it up for yourself. Okay, so there we go. Back to some form of normality, back to normal studio lighting, and my eyes can readjust. So overall, I'm actually pretty impressed. Whenever these projectors come to me, I always kind of, at the back of my mind, I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be horrendous, it's going to be dull, it's going to be really muted colours, or whatever the case may be. But, thank you, thank you very much. You've restored my faith in budget projectors. The colours are amazing, they really are. The colours are, if anything, they're slightly oversaturated. You might want to reduce some of the colour levels down, personally. But again, entirely up to you once you get it into your home with your setup. Tweak it exactly how you want to loads of things you get the accessories you get the flat hdmi cable you get this lovely carry bag all the accessories are just great and the tripod as well that it comes with which we probably haven't put um discussed enough actually it's a really good little tripod if anything it's a little bit small now i know they've had to make it a little bit smaller so it physically fits into the bag but for me personally i would have liked for it, liking it to be a little bit taller maybe and a little bit wider just to give you a little bit more of a kind of uh, a steady foot in but again you can see it, it's absolutely fine does what it's meant to do it's portable and it holds the projector up so you can't really ask for more than that and it comes with it free of charge so it's one of those things you don't have to spend out on or end up using the box that it comes in and standing it on top of a box which is uh, never the safest of things to do and also does create extra noise because of the box so yeah really happy works well with the amazon fire tv stick so if that's your thing and you want to watch movies movie night with the kids or the family get the popcorn out fantastic for that if you want to play games on it, again, really good. Virtually, well, I couldn't find any latency at all. I think it'd be a really, really difficult thing to actually work out if there was any latency in there, especially when you're playing online games where you've got a little bit of latency anyway. So for Xboxes, Playstations, PC, no worries there at all. And actually, even just general use, surfing web pages, going on YouTube, that kind of thing, is going to be great. And for the price of just over £100, $109.99 in the UK, and I've been told it's about $100 in the US, so it's a great price, it really is. For £100 or $100, you can get far, far worse. I know, I've reviewed them, but this is actually pretty decent. Flexible, a little bit on the noisy side if I was to be really picky, because it's quite a compact form factor and also that 5,500 lumens bulb, which does generate heat, there's no two ways about it. If you're going to have a bright bulb, you've got to have some way of cooling it down. So again, that is one of those slight trade-offs that 
you do need to do you've got to keep it cool otherwise it's going to reduce the lifespan of the bulb but yeah i'm really struggling to find fault with it i suppose it would have been nice to have an additional hdmi port but again it's not the end of the road having to unplug something and plug something else in i guess if you've got it plumbed in somewhere permanently or semi-permanently like on a ceiling and you're trying to run cables to it that could be an issue but then an hdmi splitter would solve all those problems anyway and they're pretty cheap and the next models up that normally have dual hdmi ports are quite a lot more expensive but again if you do want something a little bit more expensive vanco do have a, an entire range of projectors for all types of pocket sizes so if you uh, if you feel like spending out a little bit more money feel like treating yourself father's day coming up maybe you want to buy that special someone a gift then do take a look. There will be links in the video description. They are affiliate links, so if you do buy a projector from us or anything else from following that link, then we do get a small kickback, so we do really appreciate that. But I think that pretty much wraps this video up. If you've got any comments or questions on this particular projector, please do feel free to let me know in the comments below or drop Vanco a line, and I'm sure they'll help you out. But yeah, pretty awesome. I'm impressed. If I was to give it a star rating, I would say because of the the speaker quality and possibly the noise of it, I'd maybe give it four out of five stars, which is actually a pretty, pretty good ranking. I don't think I've found one yet, which is five out of five. So yeah, gets my seal of approval. So if you want to find out more, click on the links below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next movie. Thanks for watching.